Talking CRM with Jeff and David, getting the best value for the whole organization from your integrated CRM and accounting systems. David Beard, CRM Principal, and Jeff Richards, Head of Training Program Development for Sage CRM, spend time chatting with customers, resellers, and others about Sage CRM in action around the globe. This time, we're talking with Dan Cousins of My CRM Manager in Toronto, as he brings us up to speed about how he gets customers on board with the Sage CRM concept, how he works with other Sage accounting partners to be their domain expert for CRM, and the idea of Sage CRM suitability as a hybrid cloud offer, and how that plays into the future for CRM systems in the companies that he works with. As usual, joined by my colleague in crime, Jeff Richards. Hello, Jeff. Hello, David. Our guest (laughs) this week is Dan Cousins. And Dan Cousins works for a company based in Toronto uh, called My CRM Manager. Dan, introduce yourself and give us a little overview of who you are, where you've come from, and why you're in CRM, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, My name is Dan Cousins, and I am a part of the Sage CRM ecosystem. I started in the Sage channel before it was actually Sage. I was part of the Sage 300 world here in Toronto, which had in Canada, Sage 300, then known as ACPAC, was a big thing, still is. And then ACPAC acquired eWare, which, when bought by Sage, ultimately became Sage CRM. So that's what happened. I was working for a Sage 300 partner and uh, wanted to break off on my own and thought that the CRM program was my big chance. So that's what I did in 2004. So you've got quite some history there. You go back, gosh, as far as Jeff and I do, really, um, which is always nice. <laughs> nice to know other people are around as long as us. What um, what gave you the impetus or what did you see as the opportunity to break off, as you described, and focus on CRM? Well, uh, as much as I enjoyed working for the Sage 300 partner and the business model and and all that stuff. I'm not an accounting person and I never made a serious effort to learn the Sage 300 program. And because I'm not an accounting minded person, rather I, I like the idea of CRM a lot more. I think accounting systems are generally boring and for a different type of person, <laughs> CRM is where it's at and, and uh, I had more of a project management salesy background, and I just thought it was a perfect fit. And of course, it's an accountant calling you now. <laughs> yeah, it is an accountant calling me now. Yes, I, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I have to. In, I have to interject here, um, uh, Dan. Really, because uh, uh, you, you're obviously you've offended Sage tremendously by saying accounting systems are boring. For the interests of my career, I would like to point out that uh, accounting systems are highly interesting uh, items of software. For the right they person. are essential for the operation of a business, and and frankly, Sage would not be Sage without accounting systems. Thank you very much. And over to you again. <laughs> I feel uh, like there's a caveat running yeah, on the screen just, here saying I other career options are available. Much better suited. It seemed like an ideal fit. Of course, back in you know 2003 when I was scheming for this, I all and then I just thought I was thought it was going to be easier. <laughs> you know. That leads very neatly into my next question, actually, is what was the journey like from not liking accounting into CRM? What what would you recall of the first year or so? Well, I would say so I broke off on my own and the plan was that I would be the CRM partner behind some of the larger Sage 300 partners in my part of the world. And it didn't take very long before I realized I was way over my head uh, on the technical side in that in the world of Sage CRM, you need a combination of skills. You do need a technical background to install it, and then all the things you can do with it come later, which I wasn't even aware of in those early days. Maybe after, it wasn't that long that I I ended up partnering up with uh, uh, a gentleman named Robert Barnes, or it was 21st Century Systems he was with, and I was there Anyhow, it evolved, but I always had to back into technical people, and I did that with 
with Robert and then a local guy here and then with Zomba for a couple years. But then for the past almost 11 years now, we've had our own dedicated programming staff. So talk to us about how you would approach customers with CRM and, and you know, they're all obviously very boring accounting users, of course, but what, what's, your, <laughs> what's your approach to the way you talk about the value of CRM and get them on board? Well, the people I talk to wouldn't really be the accounting department per se. You'd talk to more, I would talk to more of the, the owner or the administrators of the business and under their umbrella of, of, control would be the accounting system, but also, and sometimes I'm being introduced by the controller, I suppose, but I always spin it as what are, what problem are you trying to solve or tell me about your existing system and why are you interested in this? I have a, a very sort of pushback approach. Are you sure you want to do this? Um, what are you currently doing? Uh, because it's a significant change to become this organized the organized that comes with a CRM and not everybody's ready for that and not everybody always thinks it's going to be easier than it is and it's a you know it's a it's a slog and how do you so bearing that in mind because it, it is a journey you know to use that well hackneyed phrase but it's true it you know people do have to take a journey to get to a good CRM place how do you get people on that journey do you have a way of introducing them quickly uh, easily, risk-free? Well, I generally avoid trying to coerce somebody into CRM because I don't think that's ever been successful for me. Instead, it's somebody who's interested in a CRM, and I try to make sure that I just present myself and Sage CRM in, in the best possible light. But somebody has to be eagerly or sort of actively looking and I have to be the logical choice. Um, you're not going to be able to sway somebody to go down this road if they are not already actively looking. And at now here, but it's 2020, so many companies have crashed and burned with other projects or systems, whether that be ACT or Goldmine or Salesforce or whatever, or they built a custom access system where they're, you know, brother's kid did for them and now doesn't want to support it anymore. They either have a system that they need to replace or they had a system that they're paying for that not they're not using at all for a variety of reasons. Or they've never had a system and they've just hired somebody and the person comes in and says, what are you talking about? You don't have a system. You've got to get a system. It's sort of a baseline requirement now when a new person that has had exposure to a system comes into a new environment. Getting people on the road to getting CRM working in their company, Dan, do you take them that journey? Do you package anything up to help them make a start that is risk-free and easier to get people engaged? Absolutely. We do offer a pilot package where an organization can, for a nominal fee, have Sage Serum installed, integrated with their accounting data, and do a thorough testing with their staff, which generally spans three or so group meetings. Because it, it's hard to sell somebody on the seriousness of this or getting a commitment in a couple sales calls, but if we can get them to test drive it and the more time they spend, the more they realize what a massively powerful and positive impact the software will have on their organization. I think there's a good point in there. I've said this a lot. Jeff's heard me say it probably to the point of distraction is I think with CRM, a lot of people don't know what they don't know about it. Yeah. I always feel you have to get them on a road Guilty. to somewhere and say, well, the first signpost is a mile down the road. We'll go there first. And then once they get there, the view has changed. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping this metaphor is working for me. And they see a different site and they go, oh, oh, I can do this with it. Do you find the same thing happens? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, many, many examples of clients where the one project just feeds into another project and then another, they might take a hiatus or they might just keep chugging along. But the more they see the potentials, the more they want to do, which is in some ways it handicaps the sales of CRM because it's such a service intense product. 
Um, but yes, absolutely. And I'm the same way. You don't know what you don't know, but the more experience you have, whether you're me or the client, uh, and if those experiences have been positive, then it should just roll into more and more. One of the questions I've asked of other podcast guests is where do you start from? You know, we talk a lot about Sage is an accounting software company primarily around the world, and we tend to upsell into CRM from that base. I guess maybe my question is better asked about where do you have most success first? Is it with a particular department? Where do you start? I'm getting called when they're actively looking, and they're actively looking for a reason, and they might in their brain think that, "Mm, you know, I'll have six or seven people use this, but then very quickly that flips into 12 because they'll say, oh, I could use it for customer service as well. And my marketing team, the most common problem the business owner is trying to solve is the churn in their sales department and knowing what's going on with an individual rep. And when that person leaves, how can I maintain consistency with their flow and not lose everything when that person moves on? That's a primary driver for a lot of companies that approach us. But then when they have a better understanding that no Sage CRM is a a communication system. I say fundamentally a communication system and we use it to track all kinds of information that might flow through your organization and we can start with sales if you want, but look at this, you've got your communications, your documents, the profiling, and we can absolutely get into the specific needs of your sales team or your whatever purpose you called us for, but they have to see it as a communication system because that's something their accounting system will never be. Right. And so one more additive question I might throw to Jeff to, to come up with something he's having a burning need to know about. How important is the link to the accounting system for your customers? The integration is important and it's something that differentiates. I also am big on this is what makes HCRM different. So it's Mm. fundamentally a communication system, but it's different because it's going to live on a server you control. It can talk to your accounting system. It has all these process automations, but the things that it does uh, different, the integration with accounting and how easy it is to manipulate because it's on a server you control. Mm. It's turned out to be very helpful that Sage is not hosted by the publisher because many, many organizations don't want that. Not only is it much harder to make changes, but they want their system hosted by them. Next time, Jeff continues the conversation of Sage CRM as a hybrid cloud offer, and we all talk further about managing the evolution of a customer's need once they're on board. You've been listening to Talking CRM with Jeff and David, getting the best for the whole organization from your integrated CRM and accounting systems. 